Hi guys, welcome back. This is Matt Chat episode 431, uh, featuring the first of the new series of interviews with Mr. George Zeitz. Uh, now I started uh, with George uh, last episode, the uh, tail end of that, we got into his company, he made an announcement about his new company, Digimancy. Uh, in this episode we talk a little bit more about that, what are his plans, what are his uh, preferred campaign settings, what kind of games is he interested in making. Uh, we talk a little bit about the Infinity Engine games, Baldur's Gate 3, Arcanum, some of the new stuff that's out. Uh, as well as uh, his thoughts on Baldur's Gate 3, including some pretty interesting behind-the-scenes stuff there with uh, Obsidian's uh, Baldur's Gate 3. Uh, and then we get into Loom, Ravenloft, and uh, much, much more. A lot of great stuff here, so without further ado, here is Mr. George Zeitz. That's exciting news. I know from reading all of your previous interviews, George, I know you're a big fan of the, uh, what should we call it, say alternative settings, alternative... Uh, more obscure, yep. basically not the standard. You're not a big fan, I guess, of just the standard, been there, done that, uh, Tolkien-esque. <laughs> uh, so I'm really yeah. expecting some, uh, maybe even some quite bizarre stuff to come out of this new studio. Bizarre is good. Um, I mean, if I had to work in the Forgotten Realms again, which, you know, not the end of the world. I, I like parts of the Forgotten oh, Realms, yeah. but don't, don't, don't put me in the Sword Coast. Like, <laughs> as much as I, I appreciate your love of rats, like, I feel like rats could be anywhere. Oh. Uh, and uh, you know, like when we did Mask of the Betrayer, we went to uh, we went to Rashomon and Fay. Hadn't really seen those in a video game before, mm -hmm. so I, I I get a char, I get like creative energy out of places and things that have never been seen in games before. Um, like that, that is that is the typically the source of my inspiration. Um, I find it hard to get supercharged up about stuff a hundred times. We had a question while we're on this topic from one of the fans. Uh, John, I think this is Air or Ire. He says, if you could choose to work on another spiritual successor, what would it be, and why would it be Arcanum? <laughs> <laughs> okay. A little presumptuous there, John, but... Uh... Uh, well, so Arcanum is actually, would be really fun. Um, one of the neat things about Arcanum is you could take, well, actually, let me back up. I don't know if you've you've read this. I, I heard this or read this some place maybe it's just sort of a part of the like game industry zeitgeist or something but like uh, apparently the troika guys were planning to do a um a sequel to the original arcanum that was journey to the center of arcanum have you heard about that uh, i don't think so journey to the center of arcanum i thought that was a really cool idea like i almost think you could take any jules verne novel mm -hmm. and like set it in an arcanum kind of world and you'd have a super cool spiritual successor to that game um so just pick your favorite Jules Verne novel, and I think you could you could totally do that. So that would be fun. Um, Ravenloft, I mentioned already. Like anything Ravenloft, I would love to work on. Like Strad's uh, Possession. And... Oh yeah. Well, so the the games the I mean the last time they did a Ravenloft game was like mid nineties, I think maybe nineteen ninety five or something. Uh, I don't know if I would necessarily do a spiritual successor to those specific games. Like they were very much of that era. It was like that weird open world of the mid 90s um so i don't know if i would do like any specific ravenloft game but like ravenloft in general just like the, the spirit of those of those games like i'd love to do a spiritual successor to that um another one uh i think i think you're i maybe i'm being presumptuous i think you're old enough to remember this <laughs> uh <laughs> if uh from 1990 loom oh yeah loom a uh, musical oh thing. my god yeah. yeah i had the developer on at one point Really, I, I must have I must have missed that. That like I love that game. Um, yeah, what's his name? I'm blanking on his name right off. It was I know it was Lucas Arts of some some flavor of Lucas Arts was did it, um, but that was a really interesting game. Like they had, had um, it was this kind of dark melancholic world. Everyone was organized into guilds of various kinds. Like there were no like just it wasn't cities or nations. It was like everyone was sort of specialized. It's like mm -hmm. the shepherds guild and the iron workers guild. Um, so that was neat. But then the really cool part was you were a weaver. You were part of the weavers guild, um, and like the weavers had started out weaving cloth, 
And then somehow they discovered a way to weave reality, right? Like, mm-hmm. because of course they did. Um, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> well, That's what always happens. That's always how it happens. Uh, but um, they, like, they cast spells with music. So you would, uh, you would, like, type musical notes into your keyboard. Usually it was, like, four for each spell. And then you would cast spells by, like, playing these musical notes, mm-hmm. um, which I thought was super cool. And then you would also discover these by going around the world. So you would, like, interact with things uh, in the world. And let's say, like, you found some green cloth. And if you, like, clicked on it or interacted with it, like, a spell would go off. And from then on, you could dye things green. Like, whenever you came across white cloth, you could, you could play those four notes. So I just think, like, that has a lot of potential. Um, and especially with, like, today's technology and, and what we've done with games since then. Like, I think there's a lot you could do with that. I think it's David Fox was the guy I was trying to think okay. of. Yeah, I agree. Was Very, a, uh, really, there's so many awesome things that haven't been uh, fully explored. Even in, I'm thinking, of, what is it, Spelljammer? Oh, God, yeah. That's been, that brings back some memories. I sort of have vague memories of that one. Is that the like the sailing between the stars? And, yeah, but and I the guess mind players have their ships. Yeah, the Ravenloft. It seems like there were some Vampire the Masquerade games that came out after that. But, you know, I always yeah. wonder why there wasn't more done with that Ravenloft. Because I think that was before Vampire the Masquerade, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, so Vampire's, Vampire's cool, but it's very much in the modern world, right? Mm-hmm. Whereas Ravenloft is kind of part of that um the watsy universe so it's more medieval renaissance whatever whatever that universe is um and i i love that like adding you know combining that um that kind of dark gothic kind of thing with the more standard you know forgotten realms medieval time uh and you've got um von straw and all these cool dark lords and all this from oh, yeah. different times and periods i just think it's a great setting i would love to work in it of course, there's always the Planescape as well. You can get a hold of that one. <laughs> there is Planescape. So, we, what, what, uh, if, it, what if there could be a game made in that uh, campaign setting? Huh? There. So <laughs> we came so close, right on Torment Tides of Numenera. Um, I don't know, like the business stuff. I wasn't aware of what was going on, but uh, they were not able to get the Planescape license for Torment Tides of Numenera. Uh, but man, yeah, that would be uh, that would be a lot of fun, even. Just to tell any story, right? It doesn't have to be like a spiritual successor to, to Torment. It could just be any story in that universe. It would be fantastic. I'm pretty sure we've got a lot of viewers right now just saying, Take my money! <laughs> Make <laughs> this happen! <laughs> I would be happy to do that. Um, and, you know, there are, there's a lot of, like, there's a lot of developers who uh, are designers, writers, uh, who would love to work on something like that. So if it happened, uh, I'm sure we could spin up a team probably pretty quick. Uh, I know that the other person who's working with me on Digimancy right now, like he loves Planescape. I'm sure he would love to do it. Uh, and I know I'm, I've talked to lots of other people who would do it, too. We've got a lot of folks that were curious about uh, your opinions on these new, some of the new games that have just come out recently. Uh, Disco Elysium. Mm-hmm. I think Michael Selva was asking about that, Captain Person. And also the the Outer Worlds. And then mm-hmm. uh, maybe even Baldur's Gate 3, if you've got some time to... Give your thoughts on that project. Uh, so I don't, just to be to be completely clear, I, I don't know a lot about any of those. Uh, Disco Elysium came out. I was on a stream with those guys uh, maybe a year ago. Uh, I really liked the developers. Like, they were super cool people and obviously really into RPGs. Um, I have not actually had a chance to play it yet. Uh, I've been so busy with, like, business setup and all that mm-hmm. kind of legal fun legal and banking things that you have to do at the beginning of a business that I haven't been playing anything this week. Well, that's but, the fun um, part of the business, right? That's, that's the good stuff. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, oh, um, I don't envy you. No, nah, you know, it's, it's really interesting. Like learning about this stuff is actually, is actually super interesting. It's just like, uh, obviously I'd rather be making games, but I don't mind doing the other stuff either. Um, uh, so Disco Elysium, everything that I have read and seen about it, um, it feels very much like it's got that Planescape Torment vibe, right? Like Avalon mm-hmm. was trying to do something more than just entertain people on Planescape Torment. Like he was, he was doing something that I think is, was artistic, right? He was doing. He wasn't just like, I am going to make a fun slasher shoot 'em up game just yeah, as an entertainment, just kind of a side thing you can just play and put down. Like that is not what he was doing. He was doing something deeper than that. And most games are very much just fun entertainment. 
Um, and that's all they set out to be. Disco Elysium seemed like it was trying to be something more than that. Um, and from what I can see, they, they seem to su- have succeeded. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I absolutely love the writing that I've seen. I think it's one of the first things I've seen in a long time um, that that approaches that Planescape Torment level. Um, it's very rare to see that. Mm-hmm. I love what they're doing with, like, the where different parts of your mind are talking to you as you're running around. And uh, I, I can't wait to play it, um, but I haven't yet. Uh, what were the other ones you mentioned? So uh, The Outer out, Worlds. Outer Worlds. So that's another one where I probably haven't seen any more than, than you have. Um, I have some friends who are working on it at Obsidian, but... Uh, you know they're very good about their NDAs, and they don't tell me <laughs> they don't tell me anything more than than you guys know. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I think it's cool. Uh, it's sort of like they're trying to reproduce the um, the vibe that they had on Fallout New Vegas because everybody sort of wants another Fallout New Vegas. Um, it's they seem to be capturing that Fallout vibe really mm-hmm. well. Um, so you know if they can if they can pull off another like cool Fallout vibe game, uh, even, probably even better than than like yeah, I was some of the say, new probably Fallout. probably a lot better than certain other new Fallout games. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, to be fair though, they are the guys that came up with it, right? So they're the ones that made it in the first place. So they have a little advantage. But yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Um, what was the other one that you mentioned? Uh, the other one, I imagine we'll come back to at a couple of points, but uh, Baldur's Gate three. There hasn't been a whole lot of detail about that either, but I imagine so, you've got quite a few thoughts on it. Yeah, so I mean, um, I have a couple friends who who work who are working on it or were working on it. Uh, Colin McComb, who was the lead, uh, the narrative lead on Torment, um, he worked on it for a little while. Gavin Jurgens Fury, who is a great writer, who we had working on Torment with us, he's on it full time now. Um, I have been looking forward to Baldur's Gate 3 for, like, 20 years. <laughs> pretty <laughs> like, much as soon as you finish Baldur's Gate 2, right? Pretty much, yeah. Maybe and even before. <laughs> maybe even before that. So Baldur's Gate 2, like, kind of has a special place in my heart because mm-hmm. um, in the late 90s, I was in graduate school, and I was doing, like, college, grad school, this, like, serious academic kind of stuff, and I wasn't really playing a lot of games. Um, and then like my return to games was Baldur's Gate 2. That was kind of like when I had left grad school, I had my master's degree. I was like, I want to go and, you know, do this thing that I've always wanted to do. First game I played was Baldur's Gate 2. I was like, you know, what's the state of the industry? What are we doing? And I was like, oh my God, this is fantastic. Uh, I want to make games like that. And then they didn't make any more like that for like 20 years. I mean, they, there were still some, but you know, there was never another Baldur's Gate, obviously, and there was never anything that quite hit that, like, all-round fantastic Mm -hmm. RPG. Um, So I've been looking forward to it. I'm sure it's going to be really hard for them to meet the expectations of, you know, what the Baldur's Gate 2 fans are going to want. I will admit, I really want to see, or wanted to see something that somehow followed the Ballspawn storyline. Yeah. Um, I even... Uh, on Formspring, I don't know if you saw this, but I even wrote like a proposal for Baldur's Gate. Yeah, 3. I was going to bring that up like, next. Yeah, because I, I was, I'm like, surely they want to have you involved in this. Well, I know I was at uh, I was at In Exile at that point when they when they started rolling with that, um, and I, I suspect you know, even if they were interested in in having me involved, uh, you know, I, they didn't want to like come in and say, "Sorry, Brian Fargo, we're going to steal your employee out from under you." Like, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think anyone would have appreciated that. Um, but, uh, I, I don't know, like my sense is that they're going in a different direction. I really hope they at least have some kind of connections between, uh, the old storyline and the new, like it always kind of bugs me. Like one of my, one of my axes to grind in the game industry is like when you make a sequel, try to be as true to the original as you can. Cause like fans mm-hmm. really love that. Like people love playing those old games and they want, if nothing else, like they want some continuity between the old games and the new. So, you know, have Emma Wynn come back or like, Oh, gotta you know, have, have her. Right. Like Minsk? romanceable Emma Wynn. That's what I want. Imagine with uh, yeah. Baldur's Gate three with no Emma Wynn. Don't, I'm not even, <laughs> I can't even, somebody would have to be punched. I think if that was, if that happened, I, I think so. So I mean, there's so many characters and, and plot lines and things that they could carry through. I just, I hope they do it. Like the more of that stuff I see in that game, the more I'm going to be like, yeah, I can't wait to hang out with Emma and Minsk and the whole rest Boo. of those people. 
Boo, Minsk and Boo. There's Boo. I mean, I guess he's a special hamster, so he could theoretically still be alive <laughs> hundred years later. Yeah, I remember that. I was uh, reading about your ball spawn story, divine level campaign. I guess that's back in 2013. You were talking about that. Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah, just while we're talking about this too, I came across another quote of yours about it that I really, really loved. And uh, you're talking then about when Obsidian was working on it. Yep. And you said the design team spent a couple days putting together a proposal for a turn-based combat system. I'm like, whoa! <laughs> okay. mm -hmm. uh, color me intrigued. Uh, but it was dead on arrival. Was it considered viable for a mass market RP? So I got a lot of thoughts on that. That's, a, that's the one thing I think about those Infinity Engine games uh, that I would have liked to have seen would have, would have been a turn-based option or a turn-based system. Never was it. Never did quite feel right with that real time with pause. Of course, Larian, you know, the Divinity Original Sin 2, you know, is that turn-based system. So I'm just wondering, do you think they're going to try to do that finally? We'll have a turn-based Baldur's yeah. Gate and that yeah, would be I, the I, way to go? Absolutely. I think that's what they're going to do. I mean, they, they achieved massive success with Divinity 1 and Divinity 2. So I don't think there's any reason that they wouldn't do that. Um, again, I don't have any inside information, but from what I, just sort of the vague sense I have is that it will be a turn-based system. You know, 20... 2012, 2013, uh, that was, well, actually, I guess we were we were looking at, when was that, Baldur's? No, actually, Baldur's Gate 3 at Obsidian was more like 2009. Um, so that's like 10 years ago. And at that point in time, you know, everything was action, multiplayer, like oh, that yeah. was the stuff that, the stuff that they wanted was not turn-based. It was considered, nope, turn-based isn't viable, um, so don't do it. Uh, so we created, we... I, I still remember the moment sitting in the conference room at Obsidian and uh, Tony Evans, who was the lead designer on that game, and like me and Bobby Null and some other people were all sitting in a room with, how can we do a turn-based proposal? And I think we had already been told, like, guys, don't even waste your time. Like, they're not going to do it. But we're like, we're doing it anyway. What was that? Uh, oh, just <laughs> always drives me crazy. And I've heard, you know, a lot of people, Swin Vinka has told me a similar story. In the course of Brian Fargo, you know, but I mean, what was that? I mean, the idea was people just weren't ready for it or people couldn't handle it or thought it was too old fashioned. I mean, what was, I mean, obviously they were wrong because look at Divinity Original Sin, uh, too, yeah, how I, popular I that was and Wasteland. So, like, marketing and trends in games is really strange. Like, at any given time, there are, there's like this. There's like this overbrain in the game industry that says, right now, this is what's viable and this is what people will buy. It's not necessarily true, um, but it's just kind of like what the game industry thinks is good. Like right now, like turn-based is having its moment, right? Like there's a lot of turn-based games coming out and people are buying it. I mean, I don't even know if real-time with pause, maybe that's kind of having a down right now. It's, I think it's probably harder to sell a real-time with pause uh, game <laughs> nowadays than it was. I mean, pill of Eternity 2 put out a turn-based version of, of their yeah. game a few months ago. Um, and it, I, I haven't actually tried that yet, but I, I've heard good things about it. Um, so yeah, it was very strange. Like It was it was literally just people saying, nope, turn-based, publishers don't want it, and if the publishers don't want it, then it's dead on arrival. Yeah, I think you said before, that was the game that got you into the industry, right? You wanted to make Infinity Engine games. Yeah, I mean, I really wanted to make Baldur's Gate 3 um, or, or, you know, Baldur's Gate 2 expansions or, or whatever. Like, what when I got into the industry in um, 2001, um, actually, this is an interesting story I've never talked about before. Um, so I got in in 2001. Um, I really wanted to make Infinity Engine type games. Uh, unfortunately, those were kind of on the downward slope by then. Um, Troika was still around. They were making, I guess, Arcanum and some other things. But uh, it was harder to find companies that were doing that. Uh, I got my first job at um, Westwood Studios or Westwood EA, um, and they were making an MMO. And at that point, like, I was pretty much, I want to get into the game industry. I will take whatever job you give me. Like, I was not being super picky about, you know, what studio is going to. Uh, so MMOs were not necessarily my giant big thing, but like they were hiring me as a writer. Um, that was Earth and Beyond, right? Though. That was Earth and Beyond. Yeah, it was a new it was a new IP, which was cool. So I got to help develop that. Um, so it was neat. You know, I was like, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm in the industry. Two weeks after I took my the job at uh, at Westwood, 
I had sent something to Bioware, which at the time was like, oh my God, I would love to work for Bioware. And back then you could just like send in random, uh, like, hey, would you like to hire me? I'm a guy who loves RPGs. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, so You're I hired. sent that to Bioware. Yeah, well, that's pretty much what happened at EA. Um, so I sent that to Bioware. And then two weeks after I started at EA, Bioware sent me a message and was like, hey, we'd love to interview you. And to my eternal chagrin, I said, I just started at Westwood EA. I just can't, and I can't do that right now. Um, and I said no to them. And I always, I often think, what would have happened if I had, you know, what I have been working on Neverwinter Nights, what I have been working on uh, Kotor? Like, there's so many, so many great games there that that I could potentially have been working on. Uh, I so, feel but so your pain. Yeah, it would be tough. You'd feel sort of like uh, disloyal, right? If you just well, thank you guys for giving me this wonderful opportunity. But bye. But bye, <laughs> we're called. Yeah, I, I just I couldn't do oh, it. Oh, the, the pain, too, the too anguish, honorable yeah. for my own good. <laughs> and that's all for this week's episode. Hope you guys enjoyed that. I uh, should be back next week with the uh, second installment of this interview. Lots of great stuff. Barely scratched the surface here. I'll probably do at least uh, four episodes here with George, and I know you're really, really going to enjoy those, so uh, stay tuned. And as always, I want to thank you very, very, very much for making my show, Matt Chat, possible. Could not, would not do it without your uh, care and support. So thank you so much for everything you do to support Matt Chat. Uh, and if you'd like to do more, just go to that link in the show notes to the Patreon site, a buck a show. <laughs> That's all I ask. But of course, hey, if you... I think the show is worth, uh, if it's worth more than that to you, you decide what it's worth and uh, just set up your subscription there in the Patreon. Uh, or you can go to mattchat.us, do the PayPal thing. Uh, and of course, uh, anybody who's tweeting, retweeting the uh, show, liking it, <laughs> subscribing to it on YouTube, or just saying, you know what, I like, I like Matt Chat. You know, if you just say that out loud. <laughs> uh, I really appreciate that. So thank you for everything you do. Uh, I really, really appreciate it. All right, what about that news from the Met Key? Oh, boy, what a bunch of news here. Uh, we got quite a bit to talk about. Let's see if we can uh, uh, get started here. Here is... Uh, a game, uh, let's see, cut off the name of the person somehow, uh, but anyway, <laughs> uh, this game does not have any rats in it apparently, but it does have a joke about rats in it, so I guess that will suffice, and let's see, I'm announcing my new role-playing game, Out of Gas, on Tuesday, this is, I'm wanting to say his name is Trevor, don't know what happened here to my, uh, <laughs> my notes, but cut off his name, but I'm, I'm almost certain his name is Trevor, uh, anyway, he wrote in about this game, it's called um, Out of Gas, a new role-playing game that I think you'll love with a turn-based shooting gallery combat system. Uh, check out the game uh, gameplay trailer, and I think you'll agree you've never seen anything like it. It was inspired by Fallout, and uh, Trevor says he's uh, listened to many, many, many of my Matt Chat interviews while creating this game. <laughs> you know, I love to see that. That's basically why I'm doing this, so we can have all this... Uh, archive, let's even go back in and get these insights from all these different developers. I mean, it's a pretty incredible resource, if I do say so myself. Uh, anyways, checking out this uh, trailer, uh, you play as a full metal jack. you got to find gas for your rig to get to the party at the end of the world. Uh, so anyway, it looks like fun. It kind of reminds me of a little bit of that show, Metalocalypse, a little bit of full metal, uh, or full throttle, rather, uh, if you remember that one. kind of reminds me. It's somewhere in that ballpark uh, to give you some idea. But anyway, go check it out. I'll put a link in the show notes to uh, Trevor's website. Uh, and then there's some other news. Uh, World of Warcraft. Uh, apparently, uh, not only are they still around, they're about to churn out a new expansion. This one's called Shadowlands, Balver's Back, Baby. That's his cast, Marshal of Polyga. Uh, so the Shadowlands bring a new continent to the game, as well as overhaul game systems. I think I read that they were squishing the levels down to 60. I think you'll start this at level 50. A new covenant system, and uh, let's see, anything else? Uh, I guess there's a new raid boss, of course. Uh, let's see what else they've got here. 
New NPC factions that the player can join, similar to the Aldor Scryer split in the Burning Crusade, but dramatically expanded. Uh, so anyway, I know a lot of you folks are still playing a World of Warcraft, <laughs> to get the name right. Uh, so let me know what you think about this the Shadowlands expansion. Is it something you're excited about? Do you not really care? Uh, just let me know. Uh, then we also have something here. Michael Higgum of GameSpot, speaking of Blizzard, uh, they have uh, unveiled Diablo 4, uh, done an official reveal, and it looks like they've uh, tried to make this more like the older Diablos, at least in terms of the uh, aesthetic. They've got barbarian, sorceress, and druid classes, which of course come from uh, Diablo 2. Uh, they see what else, reading between the lines. Here we go. Uh, Diablo 4 maintains the classic isometric action RPG formula, but with more multi-level terrain with verticality. It also sports a darker, more realistic art style. So some people, I guess, felt that the uh, Diablo 3 was a bit too cartoony. You know, i got to admit, I didn't really get into the third one, so I don't... <laughs> I guess that's kind of a sign. You know, I don't remember not liking it. It just didn't quite uh, grab me uh, the way the second one did. Uh, but anyway, you can read more about this. I don't think all the details are out by any means, but uh, Michael Higgum of uh, GameSpot has a nice write-up about it. Uh, then we have Charlie Hall, also of Polygon. Uh, this, I thought this was interesting. So if you ever played a home world on the PC, they, uh, th his company, or this company, Modifius Entertainment, is unveiling a tabletop role-playing system based on that. It's called... Let's see, what is the name of it? <laughs> Uh, Homeworld Revelations. Ah, uh, there we go. Uh, so it's based on their Modifius, I think I pronounced it, Modifius role-playing system. So it's supposed to be out by, ooh, launched by the end of 2022. Uh, quite a projected uh, release date on that one. Mechanics of the game are based on the D20 system already implemented in the, in the John Carter Warlord of Mars role-playing system. You set in the same timeline as the original homeworld, taking players along to the maiden voyage of a massive ship constructing mothership and its journey from the barren planet Karak. Uh, so, what I thought was interesting, they, they had some quotes from the, the uh, designers and writers on this, and they're saying that uh, they're trying to give you the feel of like the, the little, little people, the, the people on the ships. Uh, so, taking it away from that sort of grand uh, style. And apparently, uh, the the storyline to this series is way better than a lot of people know because, <laughs> you, you know, you don't make it too far unless you're really good at you know, RTS games. So I mean, I'm going to keep an eye on this. I'm uh, curious to see what comes out. It'll be a while, so we have some time. Uh, and then finally, uh, I have a new, uh, I guess, a new minion here at the Mat Cave. This is a, <laughs> a vicious little creature, a little nasty little rat. You know, I need to take uh, take an axe to this guy. <laughs> He's kind of hankering for it. Uh, anyway, let's see. Dear Matt, I found my old rat that came in the Rat Quest 5 Sellers of the Rat Lord box. Man, those were the good old days. Anyway, I want you to have it so it will have a good home cherished by a psychopathic rat nut. Just kidding, or am I? <laughs> a little get there from uh, uh, Shane Stacks. Good old Shane. So thank you, Shane, for the... Minion. You know, I don't know quite what I want to do with him. Chop him. Just take a bite out of him. Maybe just bite his head off, you know. <laughs> Stab him. Hit him with a mace. You know, the mace. <laughs> uh, anyway, that's pretty cool. I haven't ever seen one in quite this, uh, you know, quite that configuration. So that's cool. All right, I think that will do it for this uh, week. I do have a quote. <laughs> kind of discombobulated. Man, what a week it has been, just non-stop. Uh, anyway, I was looking uh, for quotes about um, novelty, because I think that kind of sums up uh, what George is after. He doesn't want just the standard old fare, you know, the conventional game. He really, he, I think he likes something kind of exotic. <laughs> and so I was looking for quotes about novelty. And I came across this one by uh, Shelby Foote. Well, I'm not really familiar with this author, but... Um, he did a big series on the American Civil War. Uh, anyway, the quote goes something like this. Of all the passions of mankind, the love of novelty most rules the mind. In search of this, from realm to realm we roam. Our fleets come loaded with every folly home. So ponder on that and see you guys next time.
She's alive? She's Nosferatu. She's Italian? 